What's going on everybody? It's Ian here with Miller Garage and I I am I need more space. Uh, <laughs> the the shop is about I think 1500 square feet and it is completely packed. Right now I have the 1966 Airstream project in it. Um, we have two more sitting over here that you can't see. The one behind me uh, and this one over here that I've been polishing and doing some other stuff and um, needless to say I need to be progressing projects along but I, I can't utilize the shop space for everything so I'm having to be creative and so what I'm doing this one right here I'm doing a subfloor replacement in and just a few other small things so um, I'm like I'd want to just get get the shell off and then the, uh, the person who's been helping me can work on stripping down the frame getting it uh, cleaned up and all that kind of stuff and I'll paint it and we'll get that one rolling along um, and so I'm trying to utilize and maximize on my area so so what I'm gonna do is it's like if I can have another area that I can have a shell being lifted off that'd be really helpful so um, I decided I'm going to build some gantry cranes, as you can see behind me, and um, I didn't want to show like the process of that. I just bought plans from somebody else that knows what they're doing instead of trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, so I'm not going to go through the process of showing you all of that. Um, I will just link below uh, Andy Rawls, who is an amazing carpenter, um, is also restoring an Airstream for his family, and so he has plans. They're linked below. Go by those and do that because I don't want to show you how to do it. We're going to get into this. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be able to be multitasking on multiple projects and get stuff done faster, especially with the help that I have. So another one of the big benefits of these gantry cranes is you can actually use it to manipulate and flip your frame whenever you're working on it and stuff. And with these a uh, little bit older Airstreams, uh, the way that the subfloor attaches is slightly different than some of the newer ones. On the newer ones, uh, it's pretty much just you use the, the floor screws to go in through the frame rails and the cross members. With these, they uh, it's basically like, the cross members are gapped down slightly and so you have to put like a, another board underneath that you attach the subfloor to. Uh, I'll show it to you here in a second. And then use uh, elevator or uh, like kind of like it's like a carriage bolt in there. And so if you use the gantry cranes you can, was what I'm planning on doing is turning the frame up on side and basically like hitting it uh, from both sides being able to drill the hole and then put the bolt in and then screw the nut and the washers and everything on it. Uh, and then from there, I'll flip it the rest of the way. And then I'll basically put the belly pan on once the floor is on, which it's most of the way on the back. I still have to do the plumbing. I'm gonna do a, that in a different video to show like spin weld fittings and that kind of stuff. So um, I'm gonna be shooting that coming up really soon because I need to get this one back together. Um, but for right now, I'm going to secure the rest of the subfloor that's there and then flip it the rest of the way and then put the belly pan on it. So 
So just like that, it's on its side. Now, um, it, right now it's, it's just kind of hanging there. Uh, I'm gonna go grab some pole jacks and put them kind of in the middle in a few places and maybe up here in the front just to stabilize it um, and take a little weight off of it. Uh, obviously you wanna be really careful working with this because you know these are really sturdy but you just never know because you don't want that thing to obviously the gantry to break or to fall and then the whole thing to come down on you because that would really put a dampener on uh, your life and living. All right, now we can see pretty clearly how, what I was talking about, where we have this additional uh, piece of wood that goes on that seam and then on the cross member. Um, and this cross member is actually lower than this one. And so uh, I'm basically just gonna run a bunch of holes through each cross member and then put the carriage bolts to the other side and screw them on. Uh, and once I finish that, then I'm gonna flip the frame the rest of the way over and we'll put it down on some saw horses. And then uh, I need to, you know, finish painting the underside of this, hit it one more time. Um, apparently there's a piece of insulation in there that I missed. Um, but <laughs> clean up the bottom side and then uh, we can put the insulation in and put the belly pan on it. All right, so here's the elevator bolts that I'm using, or floor bolts or whatever you want to call them. Um, and make sure you get flat ones. You don't want to do like a carriage bolt that has a rounded top because then your floor won't be flat. Just make sure you get the right thing. I will link these ones below. Uh, I got them on Amazon. There's other places you can get them, but uh, that way you can get those. All the washers and the nuts on the back side so I'm just gonna go down and tighten them all up and then that'll draw those bolts in uh, there's like a little square thing on the bottom the underside of the flat part um, and that's actually designed to go into the wood and grip so that you can tighten it up so whenever you initially put them in they don't go flush but once you tighten them up they will and there you have it the floor is now secure um, I find this to be a much easier way of going about it. So then from here is what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this other hoist and grab um, the frame rail from the bottom side and basically just pull that piece up and let that one down ever so slightly over there to where it'll come around and then it'll be upside down and then I'll use four uh, saw horses and they're very sturdy saw horses. They're like rated at 2,500 pounds so per. So, you know, I think that this is less than 10,000 pounds here. So I think we'll be good. So I'm gonna work on that. So what I find to be a huge plus of using the gantries to flip over the frame is that once you have it turned over, it makes it so much easier to put the belly pan on. Uh, it's, you know, the ways that I've done it in the past is to basically be laying on the ground underneath it and like jack the aluminum up using like a pallet. And it's, it's really not enjoyable because hey, you're drilling overhead with very little space, so it's hard to get good leverage on the drill, and it's hard to you know, really get the aluminum to stay flat and flush. You're kind of always fighting with it, whereas with this, you basically can just get a large roll and roll the whole thing out. And it's, you know, it's obviously not perfectly flat because I'm not stretching it, but it looks you know, so much better than the ones that I've done from underneath, and it's way easier like usually it would take me uh like one to two days depending on the size whereas this took me you know maybe three hours to do the whole thing so it's definitely a time saver 
and uh, just a lot more enjoyable in general to be working from the top and not from underneath. So uh, this is another huge benefit. So speaking of the belly pan, I get my aluminum from airpartsinc.com and they're actually a, a sponsor. So thank them for providing this content for you by going and shopping with them. But I get uh, the pop flanges, they're, sorry, the, the large head pop rivets for uh, doing the belly pans, the aluminum uh, drill bits for it, all that kind of stuff they have. They also have exterior aluminum, the interior aluminum, everything. Uh, in the correct size of everything you need as well as different finish types on the in on the inside I know there's like three different finish types that they offer uh, And then for the outside they offer like the all clad And the belly pan is the I believe it's like 50 52. I can't remember exactly Don't don't quote me on this go to their website and check it all out So I hope that this video was helpful and inspirational and if you haven't already subscribe to the channel uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram and we will see you next time